only better place I could be, be in heaven tonight. Amen. God is good, ain't he? I want to turn your attention to Hebrews chapter 12, beginning in verse 1. Hebrews chapter 12, beginning in verse 1. I want to tell you, it's great to be in God's presence, ain't it? No better thing, one we can serve than the Lord Jesus Christ. How many know we've come too far to look back now? How many know we've come too far to get off the course tonight? How many know we've come too far to say, I'm turning back now, but I'm going forward. I'm going to march forward in the army of the Lord Jesus Christ. I've got something waiting for me on the other side. I've got a land waiting beyond me that's beyond imagination. Amen. I've got something waiting for me far greater than anything on this earth. i got the Lord Jesus Christ. Hebrews chapter 12, beginning in verse 1. We're going to preach on Stay in the course. Anybody know what I'm talking about? We got to make our minds up that we're going to continue this journey. We've got to make our minds up that we're going to stay on course tonight. I've got to lay aside everything and everything else and my mind's made up that I'm going to serve him to my dying day or till he comes in the air to meet us. Hebrews 12. Wherefore seeing we also are compassed about so great a cloud of witnesses. Listen to what he says. Let us lay aside every weight and sin which does so, which does so easily what? Beset us. And let us run with patience the race that is set before us. Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. I want to speak to you on the thought of staying the course. I'm telling you, that means that my mind's made up. I've got to make it to heaven. It means that my mind made up. I'm going to serve the Lord no matter what they put out there. They may make some ungodly decrees, but we've got to have our mind made up that we're going to serve him no matter what. How many know Daniel had his mind made up? He was going to serve him no matter what. He was going to continue to pray no matter what. How many know Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego had their mind made up? We ain't going to bow down to no golden image. If it means you throwing us into a fiery furnace, we'll go into that fiery furnace. But their mind was made up. They were going to stay the course. Heavenly Father, we come before you tonight, Lord, and we exalt you, dear God. Tonight I ask you, Lord, for your anointing, dear God, and we ask you, God, to just touch, dear Father, Lord, and move in a mighty way, Father God. Anoint me to speak your word, dear God, tonight, Father Lord. Anoint me to have the words you would have me to say, dear God, uh, anoint the ears of the congregation to hear this word, uh, that we get them a message in our mind that we're going to stay the course, uh, that we're going to stay focused upon you, Lord, uh, and we give you the glory, God, the praise and the honor. In Jesus' name we pray, amen and amen. Uh, in 2 Timothy 4 and 7, Paul writes these words right before his death. Uh, he says, I have fought a good fight. Uh, I have finished my course, uh, and I'm telling you right now, it is a reminder that we're in a race tonight, that we're on a course tonight. Uh, in this race tonight, I'm not talking about a race where the place you finish, uh, but I'm talking about as long as you finish this race, uh, as long as we make it to the other side, uh, as long as we enter in uh, to the presence of God. Ain't you know what I'm talking about tonight? Uh, how many know tonight that we've come too far to look back now? Uh, every day that passes, uh, we're just a little bit further along the way on this course of life. Uh, every day that goes by, uh, we're just that much closer until we see Jesus face to face. Uh, I don't know about you, but we've got to have our minds made up uh, that we're going to serve the Lord. Uh, we're going to have our minds made up uh, that we're going to stay faithful. Uh, we've got to have our minds made up uh, that we're not going to get distracted by the things of this world and by the cares of this life. Uh, that we're we're going to stay the course, that we're going to serve him, that we're going to be with him, that we're going to stay focused on the course that is at hand. 
and that is serving the Lord Jesus Christ. I don't know about you, but we got to have it, minds made up, that I ain't got nothing this world worth anything losing my soul over. I've got to have Jesus. I've got to have him. I've got to make it home. I've got to finish this course tonight. Amen. I'm telling you, in this course uh, that we've got, we've got to lay aside some things. How many know that we'll have things that will come our way that will try to distract us, uh, that will try to weigh us down? Uh, Here in the writer of Hebrews tells the believer, he says, you lay aside these two things upon this course. He said, lay aside those weights, uh, those things that can slow you down, uh, those things that can weigh you down, uh, what draws a necessary upon one's time what takes you away from God is a weight anybody know what I'm talking about those things that takes you uh, from spending time in your presence uh, that takes your affection away from God uh, those things that just burn you down uh, he was saying lay aside those things uh, how many know they ain't nothing tonight worth uh, missing this course over uh, how many know they ain't nothing uh, worth missing heaven over tonight uh, there's not anything in this world uh, that should draw, draw you down amen uh, but we've got to have our minds made up uh, that we're going to stay the course tonight. We're going to have to lay some things down in order to serve God. He said put those weights down. He also says put those sins down that can so easily remove us from the tracks from the course. He said lay those things down and he says you stay on your course and you run that race. Let me tell you the point of these little sins and these weights are for one thing it is to distract you it is to take you off course course. It is to take your mind off the end of the journey. How many know what I'm talking about tonight? These things are out there to just try to take your affection away from God, to get your eyes off of him tonight. How many know we've got to say we got to lay some things down in order to serve him? Anybody know what I'm talking about? Too many people let one little thing get them off from God. It's time to lay those things down. Whether it's a weight, whether it's of sin, it's time to say that my mind's made up uh, that I'm going to serve the Lord. Uh, It's time to say that my mind's made up uh, that I'm going to stay the course, uh, that I'm going to stay to the very end tonight. Sometimes laying things down ain't easy. Did you hear me? I mean, you know, sometimes you may have to lay something down it may not feel too good. I mean, no, sometimes you've got to get things out of your way that will distract you from serving God like you should. Amen? How many know, I'll tell you how it may be grievous. In Galatians chapter 4, verse 29 and 30, he said, but as then he was born after the flesh, persecuted him who was born after the spirit. Even so it is now. Nevertheless, what says the scripture? Cast out the bondwoman and her son. For the son of the bondwoman shall not be made heir with the son of the free woman. Now here's a little back and up a little bit going right here. Abraham had a promise. But Abraham and Sarah decided to jump ahead of the promises of God. So he went into Hagar. And Abraham and Hagar produced Ishmael. There's where you get the Muslim rise right there. This was a work of the flesh. This thing here was what the Bible says. These two cannot, could not coexist together. We know the Bible, if you go back and read in the Word of God, it tells you that Ishmael mocked Isaac. The flesh will always mock the spirit. It will persecute the spirit. Amen? 
How many know if Ishmael would have been allowed to stay, he would have murdered Isaac? What are you getting at, preacher? What I'm telling you tonight, there's things that we need to lay down. If we allow it to continue to live in our life, it will take us off the course and it will put us on another course that we don't want the end result of. Amen? There's too many people get distracted by other things. There's too many people get distracted by ease tonight. Amen? Too many people get distracted by pleasure tonight. Amen? Too many people get distracted by being just slack and indifferent tonight. I'm telling you, we've got to lay these things down. We've got to kick the Ishmael's out tonight. We don't want to be, lose what we had with him tonight. But too many people tonight are allowing the Ishmael's to run in their life and they can't stay the course. Let's just get it down to level. How many people had something better else to do tonight than be in the house of God? Amen? We know there ain't nothing better to be in the house of God. But apparently, you can go to the Walmarts tonight and every one of them will be full. Ain't that right? You can what, turn on the ball game tonight and they'll be stadiums full, won't they? You can go into different places. They'll be, but the problem is that too many people are operating with the flesh. It's time we begin to walk after the Spirit. It's time we begin to sow to the Spirit. Amen? If we're going to stay this course, how many know we're going to have to feed our spirit, man? Amen? How many know we're going to have to have a good dose of the Word of God in our life? How many know we're going to have to have a good dose of a prayer life? How many know we're going to have to have our minds made up? It says, I'm going to be in the house of God. When those doors open, how many know we're gonna have to have our mind made up? It says, I know this is there, but I can't get distracted from serving the Lord tonight. I'm about ready to say something, it may get my foot in my mouth. There's not nothing or no one that's worth missing out with God on. Did you hear me? Too many people want to have these Ishmael's, works of the flesh. They'll, they'll sow to the flesh. How many know you sow to the flesh, you'll reap of the flesh? It's time we begin to lay aside some things. How many know we come, we're about to the end of it? How many know we're about to the end of this journey? How many know you read the news, you know that Jesus is coming? Anybody else with me? Too many people were allowing the Ishmaels to reside when God said, cast it out. It was grievous in Moses' sight. Sarah approached Abraham. She said, cast that bondwoman and her son out. It was very grievous in her sight. Amen, Sawyer. Listen, God said, I'm with Sarah right here. You hearken unto your wife. You get rid of Ishmael. They cannot coexist together. You want to preach, Sawyer? I'll let you. <laughs> hey, man, it's hard to compete with him. <laughs> it really is. Listen, what I'm saying tonight is too many people will allow these things to weigh them down. Too many people will allow the cares of life to get their minds off Christ. Too many people will allow the works of the flesh to get their minds off the Lord Jesus Christ tonight. Folks, we've come too far. These things are nothing more than distractions to take you off course tonight. How many know the devil's going to put distractions there? Amen? How many know the devil's going to put some things there to get you off course? How many know there's going to be things there? Ain't it something? All of a sudden, it's time to go to church and somebody comes knocking at the door. You know what you tell them? You're coming with me. You're right here at the right time. We're going into the house of God. Ain't that right? I'm telling you, if you ain't never had that happen, it'll eventually happen. They come knocking about time to leave for church. You tell them to come with you because we're going into the house of God tonight. I'm telling you right now, but too many people people are allowing the weights of this world and so many little easy sins to beset them in their walk. I'm telling you I need more of God than I've ever needed him today. I need more of him more than I've ever had. I need a fresh anointing tonight. I need a fresh outpouring tonight. I'm telling you I can't be beset by the weights of this world and by the little sins that so easily beset us. I've 
got to lay those side, lay those things aside, and I've got to follow Jesus tonight. We want, we got some problems in this country, but we need some people that says I'm going to follow Him no matter what. Amen. But too many people allow these weights and things to drag them down. Let me tell you, sometimes people want to know why God closes doors of opportunity on them. Because it'll take you away from him. Did you hear me? Did you hear what I'm saying? Let me tell you, there ain't a thing in the world worth missing out with him on. Did you hear me? He'll take care of you. But I'm telling you, too many people allow things to just drag them down and weigh them down. He gets their mind focused more on the world and their problems than it does Jesus. I'm jumping ahead of myself. But what I'm telling you tonight is that we've got to stay the course. That means we may have to drop some things. I'm telling you there's been times in my life I'd be sitting there watching something and the Holy Ghost will say, I need you to go pray. I need you to get up about 2 or 3 o'clock in the morning and pray. Guess what you've got to do? You've got to get up and pray. Sometimes you've got to turn the ball game off and get into the Word of God. Did you hear what I'm telling you tonight? Sometimes you've got to say, I'm not, I'm not going here because I've got to be in revival services. Amen. Sometimes you got to say, I'm going to be up and I'm going to be sitting there waiting for the house of God to be open. How many know what Black Friday's like? You know, you got people that camp out waiting to get into Walmart, Best Buy, wherever you go to. I'm telling you what would happen if people would start putting their tents in the front lawn of this church that says we can't wait to get into the house of God. Wouldn't that be an exciting time? I'm telling you some things we need to get lay these things down and say I'm going to stay the course I'm going to stay after him tonight tell people God ain't into half heartedness amen but too many people want to hold on to the things of the world and God's saying lay it down sometimes God's saying lay your Isaac down amen who do you love more? Do you love me or your Isaac more? You know, that whole thing was about God wanting Abraham, wasn't it? Sometimes we got to lay aside some things right there, don't we? Sometimes we got, God asks us to lay some things aside that distract us. God ever asked you to lay something aside? The reason he asks you to lay it aside is because it'll take you off the course tonight. You've got to stay on course tonight. It ain't worth losing, getting off course for because if you find yourself off the course, it's hard to get back on the course. Did you hear what I'm telling you tonight? But I'm telling you what Jesus said in Mark 8, 34 and 35. He said we, we got to lay some things aside. Sometimes we got, to, we got to pick up our cross on a daily basis, don't we? How many know we got to crucify this old flesh on a daily side, don't we? In Mark chapter 8, verses 34 and 35, And when he had called the people unto him with his disciples also, he said unto them, Whosoever will come after me, let him what? Deny himself and take up his cross and what? Follow me. For whosoever will save his life shall lose lose it but whosoever shall lose his life for my sake and the gospels the same shall what save it I don't know about you but I want to lose out down here where I can gain it up there anybody else with me tonight I'd rather lose everything down here than to lose out with the splendors of glory did you hear what I'm saying they may walk out on you they may not like you you may go you may get down to the bottom but one thing for sure if I got Jesus, that's all I need tonight. People don't like that word, losing. We become so materialistic that we forgot about the spiritual. Amen. People don't want to deny themselves no more. You know what the problem with many is? They want Christ to follow them. 
Amen. They want to conform. They want Christ to conform to their image. How many know it don't work like that? He ain't going to follow you. You're going to follow him. He ain't going to conform to your image. You better be conforming to his image. Too many people want a little bit of the world and a little bit of God. This ain't the only point I got. I got other ones. But I'm telling you right now, people don't want to put, put their self on the cross. People don't want to put their self upon there. And they get so distracted. How many know if you play with, a, with sin, it's going to bite you? You play with a little bit of fire, you're going to get burnt. I do not like snakes. I cannot stand a snake. I'm not going to pick up one, whether it's black, whether it's copper, whether it rattles, or whether it, whatever. One thing I know about all of them, they'll all bite. <laughs> Did you hear me? Some of them will jack some poison into you too. I don't like them. If I see one, I'm going the other way. <laughs> and we'll call one of you guys with a gun out here and you're going to take care of it before I go back in there. <laughs> no, but too many people want to play around with the world. They get distracted. They get distracted from the course. You know what happens? They quit getting into the Word. We talked about this today with somebody, didn't we? With a gentleman out here. He made the comment to us. He said, it's so easy if you miss one service to miss another one and to miss another one. You know why? It gets so easy because you got distracted off the course and you run off course. If you don't get back on there soon, you're going to be completely off the course. I'm telling you, I believe God's still looking for some people that says, I'm going to stay the course. If it means I've got to crucify my flesh, I'm going to crucify it. If i got to pick up my cross daily and follow you, that's exactly what I'm going to do. I've oh, got to stay this course. I've got to stay on course tonight. I can't look back now. I can't get distracted now. I've got to stay focused upon you tonight. Amen. Too many people ain't focused on Christ. That goes to my second point. Too many people don't stay focused on him. Uh-oh. Some of them caught me doing that again. I had the lid on. That ain't the first time. We'll have to start leaving the lid off. You know what happens? People get focused on everything else but Jesus. Amen? You know what he said? The writer of Hebrews says right here in verse 2, he says, look unto the author and the finisher of our faith. That word in Greek is aperio. It means to turn the eyes away from other things and fix them on something. The word also means to turn one's mind to a certain thing. And both of those definitions go right along with what he's saying. What are you saying to get your eyes on? To get your mind on? Get your mind on Christ tonight. Get focused upon Jesus Christ tonight. We've got to get our vision, our spiritual vision. We've got to get our minds upon the things of God tonight. I'm telling you, church, we're in wicked times. We're in dangerous times. We need a time where we need an old-fashioned Holy Ghost revival. If some people would open their Bible as much as they did Facebook, we'd be in a whole lot better shape. Amen. You know how people open Facebook looking for messages? Well, I got, I, I'm guilty. I open Facebook too. <laughs> but I'm telling you right now, <laughs> if people would get as excited about opening the Word of God as they did everything else, what could happen in, the, in this nation tonight? Amen. Among God's people. People ain't focused on it. We've got our minds in tune to everything else. It's a fast-paced generation. It's time to say, I'm going to get focused on you. I'm going to serve you. How many tonight says my mind's made up that I'm going to focus upon you tonight? 
I've got my mind of all about you tonight. I've got to serve you. We've got to get in tune with the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. How many know in the Bible on the day of Pentecost they were what? In one accord. What now? They were with one accord. Their minds were on Christ. Their minds was on the promise from above. And suddenly there came a mighty rushing wind from heaven, didn't it? And I'm telling you the Holy Ghost fell when their minds were upon Jesus Christ and the promise that he sought. They were seeking the promise, but they were in tune with him. How many know what we're in need of more than anything tonight? We need an old-fashioned Holy Ghost revival. Let me tell you something, church. It's not going to start in the world. It's got to start in the house of God. It's time we get focused upon the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords again. It's time we get our minds in tune with Jesus Christ. Somebody said to me one years ago everything you do is about Jesus I said yes it is they said why I said because everything he did on that cross was all about me amen I'm telling you when he was on that cross you and I was on his mind if it was all about us our lives should consist of Jesus Jesus and more of Jesus thing I have is about Christ. We got to have her eyes focused. Her minds has got to be in tune with him. We can't have wandering eyes tonight because the moment your eyes begin to wander is the moment you start getting leaving the course. I know this world's got some trouble tonight. But I'm telling you tonight, I'll, I'll tell you, I listened to that debate I'm going to tell you what I thought. I know we can't have that one in there for sure. Amen. We can't have. But one thing that got my attention was there's a possibility it could happen. But I'm saying if people would get their minds focused upon Jesus Christ as much as they did that, what could we have? Church, it's time we get in tune with Christ. It's time to get our minds set on Jesus Christ. Folks, this thing's a spiritual battle we're fighting right here. And that battle is to try to take you off the course. How many know that battle is to try to steal, that devil's out to watch, steal, kill, and to destroy your soul? Folks, let me tell you what it's about. Laying aside those things is about your soul. Amen? Laying aside those weights those things that weigh you down from serving the Lord like you should is about your soul. It's the reason he wrote that. Laying aside those sins that can so easily derail you is about your soul. Keeping your mind upon Jesus Christ is about your soul tonight. Amen? I'm telling you right now, if we lose our soul, then what do we have? Amen? What shall it profit a man if he shall gain the whole world and yet lose his soul? What shall a man give in exchange for his soul? Yes, there's things that there's out there that can get you distracted, but I'm telling you I got a task tonight. You got a task tonight, and that task is to serve Jesus Christ in these last days. That task is to lift up the name of Jesus Christ. Anybody know what I'm talking about? We are here to lift up his name tonight. We got to stay the course. We've got to stay that course. We've got to say, my eyes are in tune with you. Too many people want to have their eyes moved here. The moment you get your eyes off him is the moment you begin to veer off the course. Let me ask you this. <coughs> Anybody ever text and drive? <laughs> there's some guilty ones in I've already seen some fingers being pointed a couple different ways can I tell you something you get, get so distracted texting on that phone before you know it your car could be turned over amen you can be in a ditch what are you saying I'm, I'm not going to sit here and, and I'll put my hand up too for, well, you have to, no, you can get so distracted by doing that, you can be, before you know it, 
the ambulance can be on their way, or even worse. What are you saying, preacher? I'm saying the very moment you get your eyes off Christ, it don't take long till you're off course. Before you even realize it, you can be off course. I'm telling you, it ain't no, we don't want to lose the course that we're on tonight, amen? Too many people are like that. They get so wrapped up in everything else that they lose focus upon Christ. You know it's possible to get so wrapped up in everyday living, you forget about him. That's a distraction. I know we've got to live. Don't get me wrong. But we've got to put it in its proper place. It's got to be Christ first and it, everything else falls under him. Did you hear me? How many know if you seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, all these other things shall be added unto you. You can't get distracted. You've got to stay the course. We've come too far to look back now. I know there's roadblocks. I know there's potholes in the road that we hit. Years ago, we was down there in North Carolina, we was camping in Cades Cove. I was going on a night hike in the Great Smoky Mountain National Park with the rangers. We was going out in the fields with them coyotes and bears out in there with the park ranger. The ranger said, look out for a chuckle. I didn't know what a chuckle was. I've always called it just a hole or a pothole. The next minute before I knew it, I already been tripping up, falling all over the cement. <laughs> and there's what, what, the people from the church said, there it is, there's what your chuckle is. I said, he ought to set a pothole. I'm telling you right now, what are you saying, preacher? I'm saying too many times we ain't looking at the right focus and we can find ourselves being tripped up. We don't stay in tune with the Word of God. We can find ourselves tripped up. We don't stay in the house of God. We can find ourselves tripped up. Amen? Many times people don't pick themselves back up. They just want to waller in it. If we don't stay on our knees, we're going to find ourselves off the course. Amen? We're going to find one of those distractions right then and there. I'm telling you, it's so important that we stay the course tonight. It's so important that we put him in his proper place tonight. It's so important that we put him at the top of the chain and everything else at the bottom of the chain because I can't lose course. I tell these young converts that get saved, I said, you, you may have only been saved for just a few minutes, but you've come too far to look back now. Amen. I say, look, stay focused on him. Stay in the word. Stay in the house of God. Stay on your knees and you'll be all right. Amen. Stay in Bible study. Amen. So important. But too many people want to focus on everything else. And they lose sight of what is important. Did you hear me? They lose sight of the importance of a soul, their soul. You know, could you imagine? Let me just tell you this. Can you imagine what it's like for a backslider in hell? Did you hear me? Can you imagine what it's like for Judas Iscariot? He walked with him. He saw the miracles that he'd done. Can you be, imagine what it would be like to sit on pews all your life and miss out? Can I tell you, there's a lot of people that ain't focused on him like they need to be tonight. It just don't fall on the preacher to be focused. It falls on the saints of God to be focused upon him too tonight. I can't stand there with you on the day of judgment. It would be you and Christ that will stand there. What will you say if you're able to say anything? Folks, I'm telling you, we got to keep our eyes in tune. Can I have a little bit longer? If we want revival, how many know we've got to get in tune with him? We've got to put him first. Have we got that? Is our eyes where it needs to be? Is our focus where it needs to be? If we put God first, he'll take care of everything else. I promise that right now. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Anybody know what I'm talking about? When you put God first, he's going to take care of everything else. Amen? But I'm telling you, we've come, this, there's a course that we're on. And let me tell you right now, we, it, this course only lasts for a little while. Eventually, it's going to come to an end. Are we going to stay focused? Or are we going to lose sight 
of the important issue. Let me tell you, the most important issue in a man's life is whether he'll stay on course with the Word of God. You know what Paul said in Philippians 4 and 13? He said, I press towards the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Let me tell you what we're pressing for tonight. We're pressing forward to make heaven our home. We're pressing forward to see Jesus Christ tonight. Paul seen himself as a runner in a race, exerting all strength and exerting all strength and pressing on to not fall short of that gold of that Christ set forth in his life. In verse Philippians 4 and 13, he said, Forget those things which are behind and reach forth unto those things that are before you tonight. How many know we got to reach forth tonight? How many know we got to reach forth unto him tonight? I'm telling you tonight, we ought to focus on the things of God. We ought, don't, be, don't allow the cares of this life. Don't allow the weights that drag you down, those things that so easily beset you, bring you down. Lay those things aside and get focused on the Lord Jesus Christ tonight and stay the course. You've come too far on this course to veer off of it now. This church has come too far since I've been here. And it ain't got nothing to do with me, I promise that. It's got to do with the one who sent me here. It's too far for us to get off course now. We can't get lax, did you hear me? We've got to run, stay on this course. We've got to hold the word of God to be the absolute truth tonight. We've got to keep our eyes on Jesus Christ. Did you hear me? This church has got to be Christ-centered. Amen? This church has got to be centered upon Jesus Christ tonight. I'm running out of time quick. Too many people. I know this may not have been a shouting message, but I can promise you this is a message that needs to be here. We've got to stay focused. It ain't a time to get slack. It, it ain't a time to get different. It, it ain't a time to just get wiggly woggly on the course. It's time to maintain what we do on this course. It's time to stay strong in the Lord. It's time to maintain our ways. We got to maintain our ways. Too many people who don't want to maintain their ways no more. What are you talking about maintaining their ways? They don't want to have the house of God. It's amazing to me that people could care less if they make it to the house of God or who they don't. When I was growing up, you either had to go or I'd hear about it all week long. <laughs> I got somebody that way, but people don't maintain staying in the Word of God. Amen? People don't maintain their prayer life like it needs to be. Can I get an amen on that? Through all the distractions, we ought to maintain our ways. We better stay focused upon the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Hell's not a joke, and heaven's for real, amen. We got this time that we're here on this earth is coming quickly to an end. Too many people are getting distracted. Too many people are falling away from the Lord. You know, and everything that Job went through, how many has ever read the book of Job in here? Everything he went through, you know, he maintained his way. Job 13 and 15, though he slay me, yet I will trust in him, but I will maintain my own ways before him. What he was saying is, I'm going to keep serving him like I did when I had all the wealth in the world. I'm going to keep doing what I kept doing. I'm going to keep serving the God. Yeah, I know my children are dead. I know I went from the richest man to the poorest house. I know I've got friends that are against me, but I'm still going to trust in him tonight. Anybody know what I'm talking about? His vision wasn't on the circumstance. His vision was on his Redeemer tonight. His focus was upon God. What are you saying there? I'm saying we've got to stay in the Word of God. We've got to continue to worship the Lord tonight. We've got to continue to pray. Amen? We've got to continue to fast. We've got to continue in the house of God. Yes, this world is getting wicked. Yes, there's many distractions that come, but we've got to say, but as for me and my house, we're going to continue to serve the Lord tonight. 
If nobody else will, I will. Can we maintain those ways? What are you saying there? I'm saying, church, this church has got to maintain its ways before God. The very moment we get so indifferent will be the very moment in Ichabob's written on the door. I don't back off that statement. We've got something around here that many churches would crave to have. We've got the presence of God that shows up in here. There's some people around here that know how to worship. Amen. There's some people around here that know how to lift their hands up before God. I'm telling you, we've got to maintain those ways if we're going to stay the course. What happens? Many people, here's how many get off course. They start throwing out, ah, oh, we don't need that no more. We don't need that no more. We're going to start legalizing this when it's contrary to the word of God and they're off the course. They're on another drive. They're on the highway to hell then. Church, we got to stay the course tonight. We got to stay focused upon him tonight. We got things we got to lay aside. We better get them aside. We can't have nothing dragging us down from serving God. If it's going to hinder us on this course, we better get rid of it tonight. You got a TV show that you need to get rid of? It's time to lay it down tonight. You got some music you shouldn't be listening to and you know God's convicting you over it? You need to lay it down tonight. I'm not here to tell you. You know what's right between you and God, not this preacher. If you got a weight you know it's hindering, it's time to lay it down tonight. Your mind ain't not focused on Christ. It's time to get our mind focused on Christ tonight. If you ain't been maintaining your ways, it's time to maintain your ways tonight. Because just like Paul said, we're going to come to the end of this course. Are we going to be able to say we have finished the race? Have we run this course? Are we going to be able to say we're going to make heaven our home tonight? Amen? I'm telling you, we got to stay, we got to stay the course. You know, it got tough for Job, but he stayed the course, didn't he? It was tough for Abraham to tell Ishmael to go on, but he stayed the course, didn't he? Done what God told him to do. And folks, we've got to stay the course tonight. We've got to maintain our ways before God. Those things that so easily beset us, weight, sins, whatever, we've got to lay it down We've got to say, Lord, this is hindering me in a distraction. I'm putting it here before you, and I'm going to serve you no matter what. Everyone standing in here tonight, who would be the first to say, I'm going to serve him no matter what tonight. Lord, help me stay focused. Let me stay on the course tonight. Let me stay on the course. I can't quit now. I've come too far to look back. I've come too far to just give up. And throw in the towel. I've got to keep serving you, God. Let me stay focused upon you. Lord, let me get my eyes and my mind upon you tonight. Lord, if there's things in my life that need to be laid down, I'm laying them down here tonight. If there's things in my life that are weighing me down, I'm going to serve you tonight. I'm laying them down. If my mind needs to get in tune with you and focused upon you. I'm going to serve you tonight. Maybe you've been slack in maintaining your ways. I don't know. But it's time to say, I'm going to maintain my ways. I'm not going to get distracted. But I'm going to keep focused upon you tonight. In that name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen and amen.